agenda, there are there are three. The first of which is discuss and take possible action to amend the previous motion for Adams basketball lighting to include an outside timer control switch. Um, and that is uh, would we'll go under five A. Is there a motion? I'll make a motion. Second. Second. Uh, let me try your minds. All in favor? Aye. 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 That motion carries unanimously. Is there a motion to add to the agenda uh, discussion and possible action on the purchase of pre-treated salt? This item five B. So moved. Second. Second. Let me try your minds. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstaining? Refusals? Hearing none. Item. Uh, is there a motion to add uh, an item to consider and take possible action on the purchase of a new curbing machine as item 5C? So moved. Second. We try your minds. All in favor? Aye. Aye. That motion carries unanimously. Uh, item two, public forum. Uh, anyone wishing to address the board in public forum? Yeah. We're going to bring your letter up under correspondence. So okay. if you wanted to talk now, or then we'll be happy to engage. Oh, you. now would be terrific. So my son's getting his wisdom teeth out. <laughs> Oosh. So, yeah. It's bad for him, not you. <laughs> Come on up. No, no. Okay. Gotcha. Good morning, Julie. Good morning. I think everyone received the copy of uh, correspondence Julie had sent to us uh, yes, September 22nd. Uh, go ahead. I don't know the, the you know feasibility of it, but I would like to see how we can entertain putting solar on the municipal buildings uh, since I just put it on my house and it's really going to be great. Um, but uh, Charles was telling me that there's the negative part of it, <laughs> which I, I wasn't aware of um, some of the side effects of uh, having the glass. Right. Um, but anyways, I'm not sure if it's been addressed before. Sue yeah. told me it has been. It has been. Uh, but I think the technologies maybe have changed. Maybe it's time now. I'm not sure. Well, the, the feasibility of putting it on certain roofs uh, is a consideration when you explore that. We When we did the performance, uh, the performance energy performance contract uh, you know, just now, five years ago, uh, we uh, looked at every facility in town. There are some that can't structurally support it. There would be one currently at the public works facility had that roof been able to support it. There would have been one at the public uh, at the community center had the uh, roof not had an, exp uh, an expiration window within, a, I think, three years. Uh, this facility was deemed uh, not structurally sound enough at one point, but we're going to work the, the sustainable gopher task force uh, is doing a lot of work with, the, with, with solar as well. Oh. So uh, we'll extend their charge to, uh, to take a look at the facilities and see if something has changed relative to technology. Uh, but as you know, I, I think, you know, we have solar capacity on six buildings in town, uh -huh. which are the schools. And, uh -huh. uh, that, that was a core piece of yeah. the energy performance contract. Uh, in terms of garnering uh, energy credits and sort of, you know, Z Rex or whatever they were uh, from a utility company and the overall savings. But thank you for uh, okay. uh, bringing it to our attention again. Uh, yeah. It's it's an appropriate time to revisit it. How do I keep like if uh, how do I follow the sustainability task force? What they they're doing? They meet. Uh, they they, meet, so they have their own meetings. They have their own meetings and their own minutes. And, oh, okay. Like, Link from town website. website. Oh, okay, so, great. Yeah. Terrific. Very dedicated group of uh, individuals who are passionate about. Oh, good. And there's something coming up that SIL program. They're going to have a solar program yes. at the. Uh, so when that got filled, they had to have a second one. You're right. So that was good. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for taking the trouble to bring this up. I mean, people yeah. sit around and complain yeah. about things, and right. here's somebody who yeah. has really spent a lot of time and energy coming to us with concerns. So. Right. Thank you. Very much appreciated. You, you had a second item on your letter, which was um, oh, the, lighting um, for uh, lighting. The, lighting up this for stadium lighting up at the Long Hill Park. Okay. Um, we your timing is perfect. We're in the middle. Uh, every department head is in the middle of putting together their capital budget uh, uh -huh. request for at the 23, 24 budget season. Oh. <laughs> yeah, here again. Uh -huh. Right. Um, and that's the appropriate venue and avenue to uh, lobby because uh, oh. uh, you know they have a significant number of capital needs and projects that they prioritize in our cap uh, five year capital plan. Uh -huh. So uh, I, uh, I would, Rick has talked about this. Uh, Rick and I have had conversations about this. It would right. not surprise me to see uh, uh, some kind of lighting, solar lighting up there for pickleball courts. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether you uh, would list. Uh, you probably haven't. Uh, you're aware that. The commission was looking at putting up, uh, putting a uh, uh, 
lack of a better term, I uh, ran a fancy porta potty. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm which glad was, I spoke to Rick about that. Which was solar uh, powered for lighting, uh, right. and, but it was also compostable. Or okay. There are potentially some challenges with that. But yeah, they're, they're working through. Right. Okay. Thank you. Sounds good. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Have a good day. You too. Well. <laughs> Anyone else in public forum? Okay, I don't see anybody on the screen, so it does it. Good luck to your son with it. Oh, thank you. Mm. Yeah. And they're done that, not fun. <laughs> not myself, not myself. Uh, okay, item three, approve the minutes of the September 19th, 2022 regular meeting. Is there a motion? So moved. A second. Second. Any comments, questions, changes? To... I have none. Let, right. let me try to see. Thank you, Mr. Tracy. Yes. Um, let me try. Uh, let me try. Hi. Hi. That motion carries unanimously. Item four: uh, Town Engineer Janice Blazian. Discuss and take uh, four dot one. Discuss and take possible action on the award of bid number two dash twenty two twenty three Route one forty eight Boston Street Sidewalk Extension Project. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I believe you um, received all the documentation for um, the review of the bids. And in this case, um, I am recommending not awarding to the lowest bidder um, because of some deficiencies spelled out in my letter to you, including the fact that they entered uh, 13 items as zero bid items. And just for a reference for your understanding, this is not a lump sum bid. It's a, because it is a state road and it's a state funded project. Uh, we're required to use the form 818 from Connecticut DOT, um, similar to some of our other projects where <clears throat> each item is priced and then each item is paid based on the quantity <laughs> and price uh, for the project. Um, it's not just a lump sum and that's what we get. Um, so, um, this kind of raised some concerns for me. I did speak with the, the contractor to try and get an understanding of what his reasoning was. Um, he said it was a bidding strategy. He didn't seem to be very familiar with the 818 kind of concept of, you know, each item is priced. Sometimes you do get under these circumstances, you know, lower bid amounts as somewhat of a bidding strategy, but to have zeros for you know significant number of items that are important to the project um i felt that that was a little bit of a concern and then uh, checking further into the bid submission there was a lack of a um, chro monitoring report that was required for um, submission at bidding i did ask him about that uh deficiency and then he he did submit a um affirmative action plan uh but didn't seem to understand that this was a specific form that needed to be submitted uh, and then uh, having talked with him and um, a, a, an engineer from another town about a project he recently did. It was more as a subcontractor for kind of a small scale amount of um, handicapped sidewalk uh, ramps and not not acting as lead. So with those concerns, I just I wasn't sure that he was, um, you know, at a state of being up to the task of doing this project on a state highway. With extensive, um, you know, amount of sidewalk work and um, maintenance and protection of traffic, uh, which uh, were some of the items he kind of zeroed out in his bid. So, um, although he said he would do them, it just it just seems a little uh, concerning to award to someone who may not be up to the challenge. Um, and so I did, you know, obviously confer with DOT, who is overseeing the grant project, the grant for funds for the project. And they concurred and um, approved us to award to the next lowest bidder, which was uh, William M. Lading um, Construction, um, who has been our on-call contractor. I have experience with working with them, uh, even recently with the sidewalks that they did in the other parts of Boston Street recently. So uh, that would be my recommendation. Great. Thank you for covering that. And again, the funding was through. Uh, it's the connectivity grant, grant. Connectivity grant right? yeah that we've had on the books uh, we are going to have to chip in some town monies to do the full length of the project um the grant was applied for prior to me um being town engineer so it has a limited amount of money available for it but um uh, i think we're going to have to chip in about a hundred thousand dollars to cover the full cost of the project uh, which we have available in our uh, the original grant was two hundred eighty thousand dollars. Two hundred eighty-five thousand. yeah it was kind of um 
a little too small for the project scope. And we even eliminated the culvert part of the work, knowing that we would be delayed further with permitting, uh, environmental permits, as well as cost would be kind of, and uh, DOT worked with us to kind of create that gap in the sidewalk system that we're gonna unfortunately have to live with for some time until we get around to getting that gap filled. Right. And uh, just uh, how far up does it go? Just go all the way up to route one? Goes all the way up to route one. Yep. That's great. Yeah. Next, we gotta get over to Sunrise, right? Yeah, that'll be in the that future be project, yeah. <laughs> Uh, any uh, any other questions? Yeah, I just uh, so it's approximately fifty thousand dollars difference. Fifty eight thousand. Yes. <clears throat> and you talked to Layton. I mean, that Layton is a familiar company. They've done quite a bit of work in town. Right. Uh, okay. There, there's no negotiation. It's late night, so. No, the bids are the bids. Uh, yeah, but in, and they'll be paid based on the quantities as well. So while we <clears throat> approve the you know bid amount, it could come over, it could come under, depending on the quantities. So even if uh, if Olmstead agreed to, it sounds like you have concerns that Olmstead just can't meet. Right. So I I think just their lack of. Adequate submission of bid is is a, a you know grounds to yeah I'm not looking for the legal grounds yeah the comfort level of and then yeah there is a com yeah there is a comfort level and you know their their past municipal experience was several years ago I think he said 2015 time frame working for the town of Old Saybrook doing septic system work which you know it's very different than working in the a state right of way um, and then recent work that they did for sidewalks was some limited uh, handicap ramps, I think it was in Meriden or Middletown, I can't remember which, at which they were the subcontractor to Tilcon and they weren't responsible necessarily for maintenance and protection of traffic. And it was like not a lot of work either. So I, you know, based on that, it just seemed um, that we had a number of issues to, um, you know, so and you I did had, speak with- You had concerns and you were addressing with him and he, you know, he, you said he had crossed some things out of the bid and that type of thing, and he said he would handle them, but he didn't come back up to speed and get all the forms in. And, right, yeah. right, right. Yeah, it's, I've talked yeah. with Peter Barrett about it as well, because I, I have a concern about throwing out a low bid. You know, I don't want to, you know. Well, none of that, but given but, him the opportunity, and his, right. it sounds like his response wasn't perfect. So. <laughs> yeah, he didn't seem to really grasp the kind of context of what the project is, unfortunately. Um, and I, I had a, my previous life had plenty of experience submitting municipal bids. The mere fact that they did not uh, include the CHRO bid or contract compliance monitoring report. <laughs> Would have been grounds for disc, uh, disqualification. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that looks at the legal yeah. side of it. I'm just, you know, you, you know <clears throat> he had the opportunity to, to get up to speed and he didn't choose to do it. So, and that's fine. He tried, but he didn't get it right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, and we just sort of that extent, the, the next logical step where the, the value of an established familiar contractor well from our perspective yeah, I mean, no, this has got enough less, water far less likelihood of any problems it's, it's and i agree worth a lot of 100 i just you know for fifty thousand dollars you would need to make sure there's yeah. there's a reason yeah. you know, i'm hearing the reason if the guy got it and, and jumped and, and got himself up to speed that'd be a different story yeah. but he was given the opportunity and uh, it was just a paperwork twitch and he was capable of pulling it off but it doesn't sound like it I, all right uh, added to which there was an immediate threat of legal action. <laughs> which suggests that it might have been a contentious relationship throughout the project. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. so I'm, I'm, I'm sure the project. <laughs> I'm sure the project would have gotten my red flag <laughs> back right away, and that would have been that. <laughs> Closing piece, right? Yeah, it's, it's a little concerning. It was, yeah, definitely yeah. concerning. I mean, I would think in a project like this, the actual production of the sidewalk is probably the easy part. I mean, it's everything else that's that makes it complicated. Dealing with the state, and yeah, and some of the areas where there are where there are no amounts included are things like project closeout, um, protection of traffic. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Right. you know, yeah. important things. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Any other questions?
All right. Is there a motion to approve the award uh, of the contract for construction of the Boston Street 146 sidewalk extension to William M. Layton Construction LLC uh, and authorize the first selection? What, did we do that twice? No. Uh, in the amount of 389098 I'll make a motion. Second. Second. Uh, any further questions or comments? Hearing none, let me try mine. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Recusals? Hearing none, motion carries. Now, uh, authorizing the first elected to enter into the contract. Is there a motion for saying? So moved. Yes. Second. Uh, let me try your minds. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Recusals? Hearing none? Good to go. Motion carries. Thank you. Thanks, Chair. Well done. Item five, golf course superintendent, Ted Tide. Uh, 5.1, consider take possible action to amend the previous motion on the purchase of a golf cart for the golf course and change it to an electric golf cart. I have to admit, uh, you're looking at the responsible party for this uh, change came back. I had assumed, because most of the golf carts uh, that uh, I've been on, or golf courses, even though they aren't work carts, are electric these days. So this one was uh, gas power. Uh, when I asked uh, Ted, the uh, um, given that we've made some commitments to sustainability in this community, uh, I thought it might be appropriate for us to look at uh, uh, an electric. Now, unfortunately, like uh, automobiles and everything else, uh, they make it a little bit harder. Um, but uh, the price differential, um, as I think you see, there is uh, you know thousand one hundred sixteen dollars more. Um, but uh, my mind's eye, I think uh, it's worth it from a couple perspectives. One. Uh, the message we're sending to the yeah. community, uh, and secondly, what we're actually doing uh, in terms of impact to the environment. So, um, Ted, is it, is, it, is it available? Yes, they have three of them actually in stock. So, what about uh, service bill? I mean, you know, I'm thinking about a work machine versus a uh, not work machine. Um, do they have the same life uh, expectancy? In their yeah, I mean, the electric one we had was what, 27 years old. Oh, so the one you had in past was electric? Yep. What made you go to gas? Um, the other ones were both gas, basically. The, the mechanics down in the public works garage somewhat, I guess, like the gas. And one other thing, the battery life is about five years on the batteries. Uh, Basically, so you do How have to replace the battery. You have to replace the batteries on the electric carts. That's how much is the battery? Um, the batteries probably are around two hundred and eighty bucks. Oh, wow. so. How much? Is there only one on the four repair bill? Is two hundred. Exactly. Is there yeah. only one per vehicle? No, there, I think there's four in this yeah, one. There's four, so it's yeah. about a thousand dollars. Yeah, so that's yeah. <laughs> when you right. electric, that's what you got. Believe me, right. Um, I'm on board and then not to throw another complication into it, but is there already a level two charger in the facility or are you plugging into it? Well, we have a plug in just a USB port and it goes right to it. So we have, and the charger comes with it. The charger comes with it. Yes. So it's a, okay. So it's a, okay. That so charger might be able to be used for future vehicles. I'd say so. Yeah. So we wouldn't have to pay for another charging unit once if we needed, if we replace the we two. Replace other things. Yeah. Okay. Stop power to do the interesting conversation at public works though regarding your decision to go to gas. <laughs> Here we go. Dave, he's right behind you. <laughs> <laughs> he's taking well, us. Hey, you know, I I asked their opinion. Well, yeah. and that's your job. Right. But, you know, oh, the same. our job to ask the other opinion. Right. So. right. Well, Dave, Dave's here. Uh, Dave, uh, Dave, I, I, your your perspective on the the capacity to do it, whether they prefer or not. Uh, right now. My mechanics don't have any training on working with hybrids or anything electric. So that's why they have the apprehension to, to go with the electric. I'm all about the green sustainability, um, getting something like that. So I'm actually working on right now, getting them training and classes on that. But Ted said that the existing car is electric. Well, well they don't. But the problem is there. Have you had much maintenance done on the existing car? No, just your big your big price tag is replacing the batteries. That's that's, you. that's the point. Is that you need electric? <laughs> they've had it. And they haven't had the need. I guess they've done what they've had to change a tire or something. But right. Yeah. Drive trains. There's less moving that's parts. That's yeah. yeah. Oh, that's I mean, it's a lot simpler. That's the bottom line. Yeah. There is no maintenance except maintenance. 
what are the proposed uses for this? I mean, is it going to be pulling other equipment? Is it what's the proposed use? No, it's, a, it's basically a utility car. You turn around, around for everything. Yeah. Right. Plenty, I mean, plenty of power. Did yeah. you right. say that the existing utility cart is electric? The golf cart. Yeah, it was, it was a it wasn't a utility cart. It was just a golf cart, but we used it as a utility yeah. cart. So it'll have a little uh, storage yeah. bed yeah. in the back. Correct. Okay, and and not to beat this to death. Tell me one more time about the charger that it comes with. It is a as ERC charger serial number MF. I just have a you know box serial, and it comes out with BA batteries. But we have the charger, so we're not going to have to wire the new one in. Or we correct. No, it just plugs right in. Plugs in and charge it. So the charge is probably good for two days on the car. That'd be my I'll move whatever we're doing. Yeah. <laughs> what, we got to move this. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Like I said, the, the big thing is yeah, you know, every five to six years, you're gonna have to you know, have to purchase batteries. Yeah. That's your you can plan for it too. Correct. Unlike a, a repair, right. which might come up unexpectedly. Right. So right. All right, Charles has made a motion to approve. Uh, I'll second. Second. Uh, any further comments or questions? Uh, hearing none, let me try your minds. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Same recusals. Hearing none, motion carries. Ted, thank you very much. Thank you guys very much. Shame on us. None of us have. <laughs> like we really. I just made assumption. <laughs> right, yeah. Right? Maybe assumption. Just... So, um, okay. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> excuse me. The 5A is now discussed to take possible action to amend the previous motion for Adams basketball lighting to include an outside timer, controller switch. Rick, want to come on up? Another subject near my heart. Leave the lights on all night, huh? All the Guilford lights. Good morning, Rick. So uh, you already approved the purchase of the lights. And I was, under, you know, you asked me, I knew I had to come back to get approval for the installation. Of, and the I think the Board of Selectmen approved up to 15000 for installation. So uh, the quote from Musco to install is 12088 uh, But the administration at Adams has asked that we put an exterior control like we have at the tennis courts at, at the high school. Um, it is, it, it makes sense. I mean, in the long run, it's going to save electricity. So what happens basically when somebody's playing, they have to push the button to turn the lights on and they go on for a period of time, then they go off. So they're only out when someone's there. Current system, the custodians have to turn the lights on and they're either on or they're not. Uh, so, um, so at the high school, the way it works, when they press the button, it goes on for about well, it goes for an hour, but the little yellow light flashes at 50, at 50 minutes so that they know in 10 minutes the lights are going to go off and they're still playing tennis, hit it again. Do a similar kind of thing, but there's a master control that would not allow it to go on after a period of time, like at the high school, 9.30 is it. You can press the button only one at 9.45, it's not going to go on. Uh, so we can control that. Um, so I think it makes sense. We, we didn't consider it initially. That was not part of the original thought. Uh, but when uh, Jim Papa uh, met with him over there, he, he asked that we do that exterior type control for it. So that added to the cost. So that that adds, um, I think I'm going to put in your packet there for the controllers and links and. Um, Trench. When, when, why, it, why is there additional trenching? Well, they, they, that's, I mean, they may not need it. If they can, that's only if they uh, can't use the existing conduit. They plan on using the conduit is there. That's their hope. Okay. But they put that in, in the event. So I, I'd rather get that approval. And if we need it, if we don't, we don't use it. Um, so that would save, you know, $2,775 if they don't have to trench. Um, see, what happened, if one of the poles is there, it fell down. And we don't know what that might have done to the conduit on the ground. Okay. It's laying on the ground. It's, you know, the conduit on the, by the pole is all broken. So we're hoping it's okay, but we, we don't know. Um, so they put that in in the event. But if not, that would save, uh, you know, almost $2,800. And they have the source well contract. It's all Musco. It's Musco uh, products except for the, the, the timer there, but it's about fourteen hundred dollars. But everything else is Musco, um, and they have that source well contract that I put on there. Um, same contract for the purchase of the uh, lights. It's the same contract for installation. People shut the lights off when they leave if it's less than an hour. No, I mean if they, no, they stay on. I mean if it's for an hour, it'll stay on for an hour. Um, it's the button puts them on. Yeah. Just a one way trigger. Yeah. 
But but it wouldn't be if someone's gonna play, they're gonna play probably for at least an hour anyway. Well, I'm just thinking, yeah, and then you know maybe they you know have ten more minutes and they click it again and it goes for another hour. Yeah. You know? Doesn't seem logical that you can't turn it off. I uh, I can find out if there's a way to adjust it to um to half hour intervals. I mean that's that may be possible. Yeah, you know, and it was a little time. Okay, they just you know, I just, again, yeah. I just assume you can shut it off. Uh, despite the fact that we have some very recent interest in the police court's uh, basketball facility, I can't tell you the number of people who said, why are those lights on when nobody's there? Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's one of my pet peeves. <laughs> yeah. Did you call the office about that? The timer is a good idea. Yeah. And, and if, you, if you have it set up so that you're saving your staff's time, or the custodians of the yeah. schools for yeah, having to intervene. I mean, having it self service is a good idea for $11,000. So, actually, when the lights are on at the police courts, no one's there. They're just going through the hour cycle. Yeah. Well, I've asked that question myself, but never called the office. <laughs> <laughs> now, have the answer. I, I think the ones in the police department, though, I don't believe those are the push button ones. I think they're turned on in the, in the building. In the building, yeah. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, those are, those are inside. That's why they're always yeah. on. So. Somebody's got her. Are those on a timer, uh, or somebody's got to remember? Uh, I think there's a timer too, but I, but I think there's a. We have to look into that. It would make sense to do the same thing there. And motion right. detecting lights don't make any sense. No, because you you know if a dog walks by or somebody even a bird fly. I know my house. My if a bird flies by, the lights go on. You know they're very sensitive. I I think this makes sense. I mean it works well at the high school. It definitely saves energy because only if somebody's playing, you know they go on. I think long run, it, it's worth the cost. Yeah, anything else? Is there a motion to approve the uh, additional expenditure of up to $13,463 to uh, accommodate the installation of the control switch for the lights? I'll move it. Second. So, <clears throat> any further comments or questions? Let me try your minds. All those in favor? Aye. 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 That motion yeah. so, so again the total though would be twenty five thousand four sixty three right yeah. Yeah. Like the addition of yeah. Um, yeah. yeah okay all right thank you that's okay. right okay uh item five b uh discuss to take possible action on the purchase of pre-treated salt okay, come on up Dave, i hope you've had a chance to meet everybody have you um i don't think so yeah I mean, was here, but yeah, nice to meet you. Dave Castro, you've been here now, um, what, about three months since July, July, July 11th, yeah. right? Good, yeah, and he's turned out to have been an excellent hire. Yeah. Oh, thank you. There you go, there's <laughs> <laughs> which is something because the two of them work together, have to work together closely, to see that kind of excitement about uh, someone coming on board. It's great, it's great testimony. They're very excited about the salt today. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. You want to talk about the decision that we've made uh, in consultation with the, the commission? Yes. And, and uh, our town engineer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we in uh, Guilford are no longer going to be using sand and salt mix. We're just going to be using either pre-treated salt or straight rock salt. Uh, for our snow and ice operations. I put a letter on the town website as well, stating the fact because, you know, you'll get calls that nobody's been down my road, but they're looking for sand and they're not looking for salt. So we're going to cut back on the sweeping. We're going to cut back on the catch basin cleaning. We're going to cut back on the man hours to clean the roads. Um, I think it's a home run for the town. We're going to follow the state's DEP guidelines of 200 pounds per lane mile. The studies show that when you use sand, you're putting the application rate at a thousand pounds per lane mile. So it's a, it's a big difference. Um, there's what about, what about the liquid? Are we still doing that? No, we don't use any liquid. If we use any kind of pre-treated uh, salt, it's something that we buy straight from the vendor that's already pre-treated. We don't have any tanks on our trucks or anything like that. I mean, is it fair to say that the sand application is more useful in an environment or a location where you're going to have snow and ice on the road and it's staying on the road for multiple days? Or is this got nothing to do with the fact that here we've been getting porpoising weather? I mean, you know, it'll be 26 and then it'll be 46. And I mean, the sand at that point just gathers up in the 
in the curbs, right? Right. So we have a lot of swales in town, and a lot of them are actually covered over. And now you see humps on the sides of the road where water is supposed to sheet flow off, and that's all buildup of sand over time um, that we need to address working with engineering to get, get those back to flowing properly. Um, the studies show that with sand, after the 11th car, you lose traction and it just begins to freeze. So it's not, it's, it's kind of a myth to think that like people just see the sands on the road. It's, but it, that's not what happens. Um, so with the pre-treated salt, it will, it will work up to 15 degrees. So we will keep a, a limited stock of that for the for the below freezing times, mm -hmm. you know, times when we need to. But because it's so much more expensive than regular rock salt, we're just going to use rock salt. Uh, Dave, myself, and Charlie Hershaft had a meeting uh, to cover a couple of items. Uh, the first of which is we still provide sandbags for customers when there are you know, tropical storms or hurricanes coming in. Uh, you know, the, the typical routine is they bring the sand down to the fire department, the bags are there get filled up uh, so we do need to have a you know a supply of sand here and the other piece that we talked about was in emergency situations if they have to get an ambulance up a, a hilly driveway um, we're going to need to do some sand application uh, so but that's on an as needed basis and the communication will go between uh, the day's team and, and the fire department team, so. anything else anything no that, that's it for me it seems to me back a few years ago, we experimented with some product, which I thought was the liquid one, where they pre-treat the roads. Are you saying we don't just don't do that anymore? We don't do that, um, but from what I learned in the past that was done, but I don't believe that was properly put forward. I don't believe we were following all of yeah, there's no question guidelines. it's more complicated than just putting the stuff out there in a right. recent experiment. But I thought I thought we had tried to do it, especially in North Guilford, where there were long hilly roads and stuff. And so that that process has just been on the wayside. So maybe you can explain to me what pre-treated salt is versus salt. Yeah, that's what I do. So what pre-treated salt is, is it's it's infused with something. It could be calcium chloride, it could be magnesium, it could be molasses, it could be beet juice, carrot juice, whatever uh, whatever the vendor has on store. And they, they're they spraying the salt with it. So it's in the salt and it just stays there. What the state does is they have the tanks on the sides of the vehicles and they pre-treat as they put out the salt whenever they want. But then you get into storage, you get into your stormwater plan. No, yeah, I'm not trying to, to, to go that direction necessarily because my understanding was very tough on equipment and that type of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm trying to understand. So adding these additives to the salt pre-treated, does that make it last long? What is the purpose of it? It, it, it changes the freezing point, uh, the melting point, I'm sorry, of the salt. So it's not something that we can pre-treat roads and have it stick there so that when the storm comes in a few days, it's not that type of product. No, uh, we could get into that, but that wouldn't be this year. That's something that has to go through planning. We have to get uh, <laughs> equipment and, yeah, and everything and else. And I think even at the state level, it's still experimental. Well, I mean, you can see it on the roads that those are the stripes, I assume. Right. And what they do there is they, they what they do is they have a giant tank, 5,000 gallon tank on the side, and they'll have a loader. It'll put salt in the water and it'll just become uh, diluted into water, basically salt water. And that's what they spray the roads with. It's just salt water. We just go pick up some salt. <laughs> I mean, you, you just think things are confusing. But I, I know, you know, I've got a place up north, so I, I watch the roads and I see what different towns do. And uh, it is still experimental, as I understand. It. Yes. It's a good idea. But okay, well, that's interesting. I'm glad I asked that question because I thought we were still trying to do that. But I now that I think about it, I haven't heard anything about because they were using that as an example of being very, very tough on equipment. It's tough on equipment, but they sell a salt neutralizer that we should be using to wash our vehicles with. Um, Someday. 
So I'm back. So good. Um, just want to talk briefly to the environmental impact. Uh, we talked about storm water management. Uh, you know, you talked about less in the, in the catch basins, probably less uh, debris coming in the outfalls uh, on our storm water management facility, which means eventually into Long Island. Um, so, uh, are there any concerns for uh, potential well contamination? I've heard some claims around the state uh, about salt impacting wells. Uh, it obviously would have to be to a high degree in order to impact the well. But the, some of my colleagues at CCM have talked about that. Uh, so is there any potential impact? No, no. There is potential impact of it. If, if we abuse the material, then there definitely is. And that's something that, you know, I've already sent to the two uh, foremen to training for this. Um, we're going to, I'm in the process of scheduling a class for the crew as well, so that we can monitor that there's ways for us to, uh, basically take the truck so that the auger, when it applies the salt, will only put out at the prescribed application rate. Um, there's stuff like that. And then as well as tracking what we're putting out on the road, we need to be accurate with that. We need material, uh, equipment that can help us be accurate. Um, so I think we're going to see a big change and I don't, I don't see any well contamination happening. Good. Thank you. Anything else? Does the amount of material spread, is that out of control with the driver? It is. Right now it is. And now they just do it by seat of the pants thing? With the, with the sand, I'm, I'm assuming they were. Um, with the salt, it's not going to be like that. There's actually, we're supposed to calibrate those trucks yearly, and we're supposed to calibrate them anytime there's hydraulic work done on those trucks. And that's training they don't have that they're going to be getting um, this month, actually, to address that. And how will you, uh, I don't know what the word is, control or assess or regulate that that's getting done? I mean, is there... So what we do is say we know how much a truck can hold. We know how far that truck can go before he needs to okay, get. Okay, so it's a country. calculation. It's not a mechanism on the truck. Percentage. Right, it's a calculation. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. One of the things I think you've heard Dave mention a couple of times uh, while he's sitting here is training. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the first things Dave did when he got into this was to assess uh, what our, what our guys needed in terms of training, safety. Uh, you know, that's one. Uh, you know, tick borne illnesses. There's a bunch of things that he's he's already uh, stated, which I think is just an amazing demonstration of, of commitment from our employees to to be more proficient and better at their jobs. But also, we're investing in them. So uh, I appreciate the, uh, the mention of training. Thank you. Any other questions? All right. The uh, price for the treated salt is uh, ninety-five dollars and fifty cents per ton, and seven hundred tons is the uh, the request. Is that the number? Uh, yeah, ninety-five dollars and fifty-five cents. Fifty-five. Okay. Sorry, this is a five. And what is the comparison? We're getting the old salt. The the rock salt. The price isn't out yet. They're still in negotiations with the state. Year. Last year, the price of salt was fifty dollars a ton. So it's double almost. This that's why we only hold a small amount for freezing, and the bulk of our material will be just rock salt. So without using sand, I mean, it's not going to make up fifty percent difference. So. Okay. All right, so let's give it a try. Okay. Yep. I, I think you're going to probably get some feedback from the citizens. So. Well, that's why. Proactively, Dave put something up on the website. Uh, and, and Tracy put something on the website. You might get chips. You know, it doesn't. It doesn't make everybody <laughs> asking ask. people to educate themselves. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. So, is there a motion? I'll make the motion. The second. 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 Good. Uh, any further comments or questions? Let Just that maybe you know, often decisions that we make here are covered in the paper. So maybe. The um, reporter will see fit to put something about this in the paper, which is would be, which would I can, uh, supplement the uh, website. And I think the point should be made that it's not that we're using more salt, it's just that we're not using the sand and the salt we're using is treated. When does they don't want to jump to 
using or salt, you know, that's just going to send up every red flag. And, and making the points about the runoff and, you know, it sort of sounds like an all around good improvement. Great. Right. So we have a motion in a uh, second. Uh, let me try your minds. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Fusils? Hearing none. Motion carries. Okay, 5.C. It's going to take possible action on the purchase of a new curbing machine. <coughs> Dave, uh, this was in the, the approved in the capital plan, as I understand. I believe it was. Um, and so I got three quotes for the curb machine. It's going to have the one we have now is about 30 years old. So they last. There's no doubt about that. Um, the one that we have has one mold and one speed. And this one is going to help them get a lot more done. Um, I noticed when we went to, uh, to Baldwin to the school to do the curving, it took them a long time. They had to actually push it up the hill because it didn't have the power to go up the hill anymore. It's 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 just tired. It's time to go. So the the cheapest uh, quote that I found is ten thousand seven hundred and ninety one dollars through Able Tool and Equipment. Um, it comes with three molds now. It will come with the Cape Cod mold, the five inch uh, curb, and a six inch curb, which the six inch is what we usually have in town. You will see some Cape Cod, which is that slow, that lower slanted one. And uh, towns are actually going back to it uh, for the reason of worms getting out of the road. Okay. So, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, it's salamanders, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, we will have the capability of doing that. And it's a piece of equipment that will last us hopefully another 30 years. About the time you'll be retiring. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> uh, any questions? No. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Uh, let me try your minds. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Recusal? Yeah. Hearing none? Oh, so I want to vote. Yeah. yeah. Finish. Yeah. You would. Go ahead. Um, on that other sidewalk project, uh, I I didn't ask about whether it's going to be curb, uh, asphalt curbing or uh, granite. That's great. Uh, Boston Street is, we're really not impacting the sidewalk much. The sidewalk's actually going to be stepped back from the curbing. So whatever's in place is going to remain in place. I think the majority of that area of Boston Street is asphalt curbing. I just, I just keep thinking of River Street, how the, the granite curbing is nice and everything, but it's got to be installed properly or otherwise cars hit it. Mm -hmm. Just enough of a Janice, you said there's going to be enough of a setback from the road, right? Yeah, and most of the most of the sidewalk is set back from the curbing, so we're not including any curbing except for at the locations where we're doing handicap ramps. Dave, I don't know if you're familiar with it, but we installed, we paid to put sidewalks in on River Street and did some granite curbing that was right on the line where the roads are supposed to be and everything, but cars were hitting it. We had to redo it. So oh. When you come to Granite curbing, very careful. Oh yeah, uh, it had something to do also with the tight angle on the turn, and then yeah, and then also yeah, right on the edge, edge. Yeah. Yeah, it, right it on. It's like almost came, almost came from a lot of room. Right. Right. Straight pieces instead of curved curve pieces piece. on the curve, so it had curbing oh. ends. Um, not Joe unlike I had to replace the tire the other day, <laughs> <laughs> and not unlike a lot of other places in town. Uh, I think there's excessive speed on that road. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm guilty of doing the same thing. Every once in a while, I look down, oh, I shouldn't be going this fast. Did you go around the corner there? <laughs> okay, that motion carries. Thank you. Can I, can I ask the board to consider something else? Absolutely. I know it's late in the last second, but uh, this is something uh, I really... Does it have to be added to the agenda? Type yeah, just the can can I ask it to be added we, to the agenda? Add it to the agenda if necessary. What is it? What is it? Yeah. It's for... A, 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 so in... In 2019, 2020, there was capital funds that were awarded for a new excavator. Right. We never bought the excavator. Okay. We need a loader right now. Right. Our loader is breaking down, has high hours. Right. I want to trade in the excavator and trade in the old loader and buy a new loader. Okay. What are we going to do about excavator? We have a mini excavator, which we use for everything. The large excavator, we don't use. I would just rent one whenever we need it, and that's it. Okay. I think we need a proposal. Yeah, can you get us some numbers on it? We'll take I, it up. But... I have all the numbers. Okay. Uh, Let's add it to the agenda. Yeah. yeah. I'll go. 
I'll second, second it. Second. Mm -hmm. All right. Let me try a million on adding it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. I uh, want to walk through some of the numbers. I'm sorry know? for the for oh, no, last no. second, but it's because it's I got quotes for, for two machines, mm -hmm. one from Caterpillar, one from John Deere. And they said, if we both have them on a lot, if you don't buy them now, you got to wait nine to 10 months. Yeah, okay. There's, there's, there's a reason to have state bid projects or anything. So like I went off of SourceWell. So with SourceWell, the list price of the machine is three, uh, before SourceWell, the list price of the machine is $319,000. In the capital, we were awarded 180,000 for an excavator, which I'd like to use that money for the loader. With the source well bidding, it brought it down to 100, and, um, I'm sorry, $210,000 off of source well. Now, trading in the two pieces of equipment, we're looking at a price tag of uh, $95,151.88 for a brand new loader. Money has already been allotted. It was allotted for, for the. It was allotted for the excavator. How much was it? Hundred and eighty. One hundred and eighty thousand was awarded for the excavator. <laughs> prior year, so not in the current year. Correct. It was 2019, 2020. and I don't know if it wasn't purchased because of it was the the pandemic, or I don't know what happened there. If if my understanding is correct, there was a difference of opinion between the former uh, public works director and the commission over the need for the excavator for a new excavator. And they're right; we don't need the excavator. Okay. And so I went with the commission, and I told them I need a new loader, and they said, "Go get prices, and we'll do an emergency meeting." But go to go to the board of selectmen first and get approval. Okay. And the vendor called me and said that our old load. So they gave me quotes on the trade-in of the two pieces of equipment. Our old loader alone, they're giving us a trade-in value of eighty thousand dollars. What's so bad with it that you need one so bad? It has it has high hours, and right now there's mechanical issues that we don't know how deep we're getting into with repairing. Right now, we just oh. looked at it. It's ten years old. Not that old. What's the expected life like? Uh, it depends on the hours, how much you use the thing. We use that thing all the time because that's our main loader for loading the what trucks. And everything. It's a John Deere. It's a John Deere. I would have thought they bought more like 10 years. That means I was around when we bought that thing. Remember, loaders are expensive. Any other questions or thoughts? So you're pretty confident that the need for the excavator is sufficiently rare that we can either do it on a rental basis or collaboratively with another town, whatever, which would be a rental. We don't need that equipment, the full-size machine. On the, 120 the 120 excavator sits. It doesn't, we don't, we never use it. And like I said, if we needed something that size, we would just rent it. Um, we have our mini excavator and that's the that and this loader are the two backbones of our garage. We use them all the time. Well, that makes it more efficient to have. Yeah, there's no mini excavator. Oh, yeah. we They love them. That the mini excavator is used for everything. And that's a good Especially shape. for our level of work. I mean, we're not a construction. You know, once in a while, we'll do bridges and stuff. Like that. At one point, that's what I someone wanted to do was to turn us into a construction company. The former town engineer was very fond of that notion. And uh, I think yeah, but we've had I've had that discussion over the years. Struggle with it. We're getting back to maintenance here, and I see that we have a lot of equipment we need to get rid of. And what I'm my plan is to use them all as trade ins for other stuff. Oh, to save us money. <laughs> that big truck that's behind the, the recycle center, I've been looking at that for 20 years. That's mine. <laughs> that's, that's <Jesus. laughs> not mine. <laughs> I'm getting rid of it with a auction, but then COVID hit. So, <laughs> well, <laughs> get it back on the news. Because I remember government. the. You want to so buy it? it? No. Oh. <laughs> but I remember talking to somebody down there in the year. I mean, you're talking 10, 15 years ago when we cleaned out, because we had a bunch of stuff there, but we cleaned out a lot of it. And they said it still ran. Oh, I don't I know can't about that. that. 
It's got Gary McGowan yeah. written all over it. <laughs> no, this has this has uh, gum deals written all over it. Uh, yeah. The organization that oh, yeah. me a and it's, I mean, just scrap. It's the massive size of it. I think that's probably why I never moved because of the size of it. And it's just buried in the woods there, and nothing else. Something's leaking out of it. I bet we've been cleaning house at, in yeah. Public Works, and we just did gulf deals. So yeah. fifty-five thousand general fund trading and stuff. It's half your new uh, load. Can, 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 can we get the old public works facility completely cleaned up? <laughs> uh, so we're all we right. So so let's uh, let's try to craft the motion. So the uh, total expense uh, to purchase the new loader. Uh, after the trade-in of the uh, excavator uh, and two other pieces of equipment, or is it two pieces total? Two pieces total. Okay. The net cost to us is going to be? Uh, $95,151.88. Is there a motion? I'll make a motion for that amount of authorization to buy this new loader. Second? I'll second. Uh, any further discussion or code? Uh, not, yeah, I, I, not to say, we originally had a budget allocation of three hundred nineteen thousand for the, the, the old excavator. Uh, you know, is that the numbers is that the number that was sitting in the capital plan? Uh, one hundred and eighty thousand for, for the new excavator. So okay, so, so so what I'm saying is there that that authorization still has eighty to ninety thousand dollars. Okay, right. I'm confused. We didn't bond for it. It was just in our capital plan, but not in the current year. So we do not have funding in the current year. Is that correct? Have you checked with uh, Mary Jane? Uh, it, yes, it's bonded money from 2019 2020. Great. Well, normally it was a push for a lot of equipment. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, I like the creativity of your thinking and the, you know, the ability to reassess. Our our true needs and uh, and, and make uh, appropriate accommodations. Keep cleaning out and trading in. <laughs> yeah, the only concern that, that I would express with, with the lifespan of the equipment and you're comfortable with uh, with this brand, but you know you've gotten two bids and it sounds like you're comfortable with this brand or deal. Where is it a local dealer? It's W I Clark in Wallingford. Or, if if you're comfortable, your operation is comfortable with the fine. It just seems to me that a lot of money for ten years. Right? Yeah. What do I? I don't know what happened in the past either. So like, I know that I can. Instill. Well, I remember buying a bunch of equipment, including trucks. And next week, next week, the, the loader you know rings a bell. If I remember the old loader was really hurt. Uh, but then I remember them coming back with uh, needing, and I think the number was like thirty or forty thousand dollars worth of programs and training for the new electronics on the new equipment. The trucks and that was on the uh, you know, I'm sure you know some of it will be transferable transferable, but uh, I don't know. It just seems ten years does not seem very long, you know, for somebody that's driving a two thousand and two car. <laughs> speaking of speaking of loaders, did we purchase one of the one for uh, waste transfer station? Was yeah, that was a backup. Backup. That's what it was. Okay. Got it. That's a pretty big machine too. Though. I mean, it's yeah. not a loader, but that's more than just a backup. Yeah. Compactor as well. Yeah. Compacts the bulky. All right, we have a motion on the table. Any further comments or questions? Let me try your minds. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Staying recusals. Hearing none. Motion carries. Tim, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, item number six uh, discussing to take possible action authorizing the sale of surplus equipment and vehicles through Keep recovery. What's that? Give it out. Speak. Yeah. yeah. Right, good. I think uh, this is just a clarification, and Pete uh, or Carrie can weigh in here. Uh, when we approve the use of gum deals, I'm not sure we explicitly approve the sale of town equipment, which is waiving our traditional um, uh, uh, process for the sale or disposal of uh, equipment. So, Peter, Karen, what, what are you actually looking for here? We're looking for Pete. It was, it was just, actually, just what you said. It was just clarification that, because I think the 
current purchasing policy states that the board has to approve sales of vehicles. And we just got rid of about 20 vehicles. And so rather than come to you with each one, just to clarify that, you know, you're okay with the first selectman's approval um, of selling the vehicles rather than come to the full board for 26 individual vehicles. So we'll be, well, we hope to keep using Gov deals um, in the future. So it's just a point of clarification for all, everyone. So, yeah, I'll, I'll just say, I think that you know, the purchasing ordinance allows, um, or the, um, uh, the complimentary um, uh, policy we have for disposing of property allows an auction service. And, we, you know, we haven't used this one previously, but I think it's, um, I, I think, and Karen, correct me if I'm wrong, I think we talked about this, and I, I've kind of come to the uh, determination that when you approve the use of that auction service, part of the auction process is you're committing uh, to selling at the at the price. So, you know that is kind of implied by the service, but we not sure if everyone understood that. Uh, so I think this this particular time around, we're going to confirm it. I think was the thinking. When you say confirm it, you're saying confirming that the process that we assumed was okay, which is because uh, the you know, GOV deal handles all the negotiations, that by approving the use of them, we are in fact approving uh, the sale as well. That, that's right. That's right. That's, that's how I uh, look at an auction process once you commit to it. Got it. So I, I actually had not seen this on the agenda, uh, but that's my... Uh, my take on it. Great. Um, MJ? Yeah, <clears throat> I just wanted to add that um, by agreeing to go with GovDeals, GovDeals has a three-day requirement. If, if I'm going to bid on GovDeals, there's a three-day um, turnaround um, for the approval uh, if I'm going to purchase something. Uh, so because of that, we need pre-authorization to make that approval. Otherwise, um, we're having special meetings every single time we use gov deals um, moving forward. So uh, it, this allows us to put the things out on gov deals, get our bids, award the bid, and sell the product and get our money um, as quickly as possible. All right. So I guess what you're looking for, Pete, is just an acknowledgement by the board that the uh, approval of the use of gov deals is the de facto approval of the sale of anything that arises through that auction. Yeah, actually, I wasn't aware I was looking for anything along those lines. So, <laughs> okay. so I, I, right, so, I did. So, so yeah. it's more an understanding of the board that that's what we have approved. Sure, that approved the use of gov deals. Then we've that's taken right. a step well, Mary, out of the process. And MJ's, uh, you know, ringing a bell for me. That's right. This is, you know, three day turnaround. So it certainly comes with the process. Okay. Any comments? Any concerns or comments? Motion. No, I don't think so. It's just, I don't think you need an additional motion. I think uh, I guess we just wanted to make a point of clarification, perhaps. <clears throat> Excellent. All right, thank you. Uh, item seven: uh, Consider take possible action on a recommendation to establish a permanent affordable housing commission. Sandy, another full time. Well, um... <laughs> well, let me let me give a little background. Yeah. Uh, as the as there's. There, and we'll, there is and will continue to be uh, a spotlight on affordable housing and the development. I think uh, this board has is aware that we've done a couple of things. Our tax incentive program included uh, a carve out for affordable housing. Uh, we also approved an ordinance will allow for tax abatements for uh, home ownership on affordable housing. Um, we have a need to ensure compliance that those who are actually in uh, affordable housing uh, facilities uh, are, are, are meeting the criteria. We are shifted most of that burden to the developer. Um, however, the town still needs to have somebody as an oversight. And I could say with the certainty that uh, this will be, uh, affordable housing will again be a focus of uh, the legislative session this year. Um, and the other things we have, what, at this point somewhere around 300 units of housing that are, that are proposed are in some form of negotiation with uh, uh, our land use departments and with the expectation that there are several other big projects that are coming through. 
Um, so uh, we think at this point uh, that it is appropriate for us to have a standing affordable housing uh, commission. And the folks that have been volunteering in the uh, econ housing for housing economic, economic development, development plan committee. which has been which has been a wonderful organization that steered us, uh, you know, from the, the early discussion phases about affordable housing, uh, where we were wound up with the, the eventual product still not built yet is the uh, NeighborWorks New Horizon uh, project mm -hmm. down by uh, the train station. So. And I can say again, say with certainty, transit-oriented development uh, will be a will be a big push this year in the legislature. Um, one thing that we need to uh, the caveat is that uh, transit-oriented development is all is is all about density in those areas, including you know increasing the density by right, um, you know, so which effectively bypasses local zoning. However, um, those uh, the, the density issue is one that we don't face because they still have to meet the septic requirements. Several of my colleagues, particularly on the uh, southwestern side of the state, are vehemently opposed to some of the proposed legislation about uh, uh, transit-oriented development and uh, additional density by right because they have sewers. And they're contending that uh, they, they need to add sewage capacity and it may impact it. But so I think, uh, given what's going on, you know, statewide with not only just affordable housing but the lack of housing is significant in the state and i think the uh, the, the plan the affordable housing plan we put together if you had a chance to take a look at it it depicts a significant uh, need for a variety of types of housing in, in guilford affordable being only one of them, so we Thank met you. with our committee met in person last week and um i think you brought this up i mean I think we've reached a point, and I know I remember you have a concern about establishing yet another commission, but I think for all the reasons that Matt just stated, <laughs> it's time for us to formalize this um, a, a little bit, make it a little bit stronger. Yeah, I can I can see that, you know, point, obviously, because it, you know, to Matt's point, it, it is becoming a bigger and bigger issue for our community and our state. Uh, but to your point, uh, affordable housing impacts so many different areas of our community. Uh, and because of that reason, you know, both the, the intended and the unintended consequences of, of development in per se, whether it be planning zoning issue, tourism issues, transit issues, I mean, it, it really affects environmental issues. Uh, I would be, uh, I, I have no problem with establishing the commission, but I would really like to see uh, formalized what their charges. Uh, thank you, thank you for that. That was uh, one thing that I had, I didn't cover. Um, so I think if we give the approval to move forward with establishing it, it's got to be done by ordinance. Uh, so we'll work. And with... what we're asking them to do, we can give them some initiatives and also some responsibility because. It's it's going to take some responsibilities out of other commissions, uh, and it will affect other commissions. I mean, to your point about planning and zoning, I mean, maybe we ought to make the requirement that a, a member of planning and zoning has to be on vote, that type of thing. Because well, the, uh, yeah, there is a member of planning and zoning on. I, I I'm heard, assuming that this, the chair. Um, yes, Scott Edmonds is a member of the Housing for Economic Development Plan Commission. He happens to be. He's on page. Yeah, well, my point page. is, when we establish it in the charge, we make it. Make it and and I, I believe that. I mean, my thought is that we won't have this committee anymore. It would, uh, right. It things cool. that are happening under this committee will then be folded <laughs> into <laughs> what is going on too. with this yep. um, commission. And a lot of the committee members may apply to be on the commission. You know what I mean? I, well, the other thing about it. Yeah. A committee you know, can make recommendations. A commission has a little bit right. more authority right. because we will probably refer things to that commission to make a decision, to make a recommendation. Agreed. And I would also just, you know, it, it's different from the existing housing authority, which is charged specifically and pointedly with the elderly housing in town. Oh, that's so, step, yeah, that's completely different. Sure, we know that. Yeah. And mostly. People are kind of tough, but they're going to sound similar. We talk about two commissions that work together. Yeah, mm -hmm. that would be a there. There is some 
universe in which the circles, yeah. you know, do, do meet. So having one commission to handle both, is that just too broad of an... I think, it, I think it is because they have governance responsibility for the management of those housing yeah, complexes. They're actually running, the, they're actually running those uh, complexes. Well, the executive director is, but it's more of a... Yeah, but they're overseeing right. Well, we can certainly have a conversation with them to see if it makes sense to do that. Uh, you know, they're, right now, they're down two members. So, that, that group's down two members. so the I question think, would be, is it of more interest to people to be involved if, in fact, it's not simply that chip? Yeah. I'm not proposing it, yeah. but it's at least worth looking at, okay. getting the red flag. Good. All right, so we'll move forward with uh, starting to craft some kind of ordinance and uh, charge. Uh, we'll do the best plagiarism we can. Find other towns. Or I was just going to say, I, I bet, I bet there's some towns that already have this in place. Okay. We can see yeah, this. Yeah, and yeah. Always we <laughs> Both Pete and I are fond of finding past precedent. Yes. I'll leave that in another aspect of it. <laughs> <laughs> um, while we're on the subject, I would just let you know. So we had we we had a good, very good meeting of the committee last week. Matt was in attendance, and um, once again, I just want to remind you that on. Um, Tuesday, October 18th, which is the day after our next um, EOS meeting in the evening at the library, we're having an in-person and hybrid, hybrid and in-person, um, just update of uh, what's happening with the Woodruff property. And there is some good news about that. It looks like uh, we're gonna have some, move, the next phase of movement on it. And um, also uh, private developers discussing what's going on in, in town. It's just an informational um, meeting for the public to, to um, listen and ask questions if they so choose. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? We'll start to move forward. All right. Uh, item eight: appointment for recommendations. Uh, is there a motion to act on a recommendation to move Kit Griffin from an alternate to regular member on the Shellfish Commission to fill a vacancy for a term to expire February 28, 2024? Yes, I'll make the motion. And a second. Second. Uh, let me try your minds. All in favor? Aye. 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 That motion carries now. So. Uh, 8.2, act on an appointment of Tony Fapiano to the Green Committee as the Guilford Foundation representative for term to expire on September 30th, 2023. I'll make that recommendation. Is there a second? I'll second. I also want to extend thanks to Tom Pinchbeck, uh, who uh, sent the letter indicating that he had found his own replacement. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and for his service as well. So, uh, all right. Did we have a second? Yeah. Okay. Uh, let me uh, try your minds. All in favor? Aye. 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 A couple uh, of guys have done a few things over the years. Yeah. yeah. You think? Yeah. Well, it's same same uh, characters keep showing up and doing what they what they do best. All right. Item nine: Request for use of town property. Uh, act on a request from Guilford Interfaith Volunteers to place a sign on the green advertising its Veterans Patriotic Dinner taking place November 11th. 2022 sign placement 10 20, 20 through 11 3. Is there a motion? Yep. A second? Second. Uh, the only comment is I'll be at that uh, that dinner that's over at the community center. It's usually a wonderful event. They packed the place uh, in the, you know, at least pre COVID. It was filled to the gills. So let me try your minds. All in favor? Aye. 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 Close. State rules and motion carries. Like that too. Act on a request from the Sarah Foundation. Place a sign on the green advertising it. Stand up for Sarah. Comedy event taking place on November 11th, 2022. Is there a motion? Yeah, I'll take the motion. Second. Second. Let me try your minds. All in favor? Aye. 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 The motion's unanimous. Uh, item 993. Act on a request from the Shoreline Arts Alliance to place a sign on the green advertising its costumes and cocktails event taking place on October 21, 2022. Sign placement 10 6 to 10 20. So moved. And a second. Second. Let me try your minds. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Carries unanimously. I've done that before. Act on a request from the Shoreline Chamber of Commerce to place a sign on the green advertising its fall food festival and expo taking place on October 15th, 2022. Sign placement 10 3 to 10 16. Is there a motion? Someone? A second? Second. Let me try your minds. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. Community reports. I think we just got one from Sandy. The uh, correspondence. Response from the Human Rights Commission regarding the proposed transgender program. It's in your packet, right? Um, and again, the reason this is coming back before us is when in the uh, in the ordinance that we created for the Guilford Human Rights Commission, uh, we reserved the right to approve any programs, edu educational programs uh, that the commission, uh, excuse me, felt was appropriate for the community. 
uh, and this is one uh, that they uh, this is going to be presented by uh, uh, an MSW uh, trans right activist and author Jillian Solentano. Uh, and the description was in the packet. Uh, does anybody? Uh, well, first off, uh, is there a motion to approve? Uh, yeah. What are, yeah, go ahead. Motion to approve. No, what, what, what are we approving? We're approving them the, their right to have to put on that uh, educational I program. See. That is what's required in uh, the charter. I'll, I'll make the motion. There, is there a second? I'll second. I'll okay, second. Comments, comments or questions? We're, we're moving the right to uh, make a presentation. We're, appro we're, approving, we're approving the educational uh, presentation. Uh, by the Government Human Rights Commission and their appointed representative. We've done this before for this commission. If they have a program, I guess the way the or the or not the ordinance, oh, the it's charter for the commission is part of their. Right? We we have to. They can't put on a program and unless, they we, can, approve. unless we approve it of any kind. Oh, oh, oh so they're okay. telling they want oh, to put right. this program. Oh, they don't have the date. I, I see what this. Uh, yes, yeah. yeah. through. The, they want to have this program. Public. We're approving, allowing the commission to present this. Yes. Program. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's interesting that I can't imagine another commission that we have that requirement. Well, when we established this, we had some, there was some legitimate concern about what direction that commission could go in if it was given unfettered uh, access to do stuff. Okay. And, and ultimately, the, but it is a good point. I mean, it's like a community center event that normally would just go there, but right. given the way this was set up for those reasons, right. they need to come here first. Got it. I, what, Sorry, yeah. sorry, I wasn't clear. No, no, it's fine. I could have dug under it. I could have dug under, dug under it first, but I get it. Yeah, refresh our memory. Yeah, thanks. Now let, let's let, you know. Let's be very honest about this. This may uh, engender some reaction from certain portions of the community. Mm -hmm. sure. um, but uh, I did have one community member reach out to me with concern about the age thirteen aspect of it. The uh, yeah. 13 plus, although younger audience members are welcome if parents are comfortable bringing right, right. Yeah, I, I, the target audience, I think, was designed to say, you know, this is the A, this is the material stuff that we'll be covering at that point, um, as opposed to, you know, we're trying to promote it amongst 13 year olds. And, mm -hmm. and again, uh, I think it's pretty clear it says younger youth and their families. So, uh, yeah. I, I, again, I, I would be concerned if a 13 year old showed up without. Parental, uh, uh, parental guidance. Well, other than being concerned, you know, should we be more than concerned? I don't know what we do, but oh, it's here. The whole point of this is it's, it's here. It's so, yeah. That, yeah. Whatever you're thinking is, is within play. Yeah, and it's squarely within the purpose of that commission. It's, it's to promote understanding and respect. For, for, for. So I, I just know, like in terms of. Kids being left in the library unsupervised once it's over 12, it's okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, a 13 year old can walk in the library without their parents. They at the library and they walk in. Yeah. This presenter, from what I've seen, does right. a lot of presentations at libraries. That's right. more common than a, than a town so, right. yeah. Any further comments, questions, concerns? Hearing none, let me try your minds. All in favor? Aye. 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 That motion carries unanimously. Thank you very much. Uh, old business, uh, new business, public forum. Hearing none. Uh, I, I, oh, John, new business, old business. Well, I, I talked to you a little bit about it, and uh, there's so much uh, going on about the cost of energy going into the uh, heating system and that type of thing. I just want to make sure that. Uh, uh, all funding that's possible is in place because I think this is going to be a tough winter for a lot of people. You what know, Tammy? Yeah, Tammy. Tammy's an energy fund, right? And, and the I heat. What is it? I heat uh, monies. The defense just approved ex, uh, expanding the allocation to the states. I thought I saw some. Uh, however, that's probably still not going to cover the difference between. Uh, yeah, I didn't know if there was some, you know, emergency situation. <clears throat> I, I just want you uh, to be aware of maybe check with Tammy, have her uh, report to us. You know, is it under control? Sure. Does she have any recommendations? Because I think it's, 
I think it's going to be a difficult season. It, it will be, and, and particularly with there being less available this year than there was last year from the state. Uh, what does her What does her fund look like? So yeah, to, that, yeah. to that, to um, that, um, ever let us know if she's got some ideas or recommendations, if she can help, or if she has control. Absolutely, thanks, Charles. I'd rather do it now than January. Yeah. Make a note because I don't trust my brain. All right. Um, there's nothing in public forum. Is uh, is there a motion to uh, go into executive session to discuss and take possible action on the tax deferral program appeal? Second. 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 Let me try your minds. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That motion carries. Okay. Uh, Trace, uh, thank you. Uh, is there a motion to come out of executive session? So moved. Yeah, second? Second. Let me try your minds. All in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Uh, in executive session, uh, no motions were made, no action was taken. Uh, however, is there a motion to approve uh, the granting of the relief for the two uh, Gilbert Supplementary Tax Relief uh, Program participants uh, that were discussed? Is there a motion? So moved. And a second? Second. Second. Let me try your minds. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Recusals? Hearing none. Motion carries. Uh, that seems to have concluded our business. So, entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. We have to do our employee.